Hi all, welcome to part 4 of the video lecture on relational data model and so far in first three parts of the video we saw in detail what is uh, this relational data model, the formal as well as the informal definition and some of the constraints is what we discussed in the last part like uh, the uh, domain constraint, uniqueness constraint or key constraint those things uh, we saw. Now it's time for us to explore more constraints particularly the, um, the constraints which are coming under the category integrity constraint right so which related to the integrity of the database uh, something like this. So integrity constraints are specified on a database schema and are expected to hold on every valid state or da database state. So if any of this integrity constraint violates you can say that the database is moving on to a invalid state right. So we want them to be true for making the any database state to be valid. In addition to domain uh, key and not null constraint two other types of constraints are con part of the relational model ok. So these things are also integrity constraints only but more uh, interestingly we have uh, two in more integrity constraints called the entity integrity constraint and the referential integrity constraint. So out of this this referential integrity constraint is more important. This is something uh, a very simple concept entity integrity constraints uh, we will see that. When we refer to the uh, relational database, we implicitly include both its schema and its current state. So that is by default. A database state that does not obey all the integrity constraints is called as a not, uh, is uh, said to be not valid. And a state that specifies all the constraints defined in the set of constraints. So let I say denote the set of all integrity constraints. Uh, let me define what are all the integrity constraints I want to hold. So if a particular database state hold all the constraints uh, defined within the set I can say that the database is in a valid state if any one of the integrity constraint is violated that time itself the database will move on to an invalid state. Okay, now entity integrity constraint this is something I already told in the previous part of the video lecture like uh, it is something related to the primary key. So by default you know primary key it is the one which makes the database unique right. So it is trying to impose that uniqueness constraint. So no two tuples in the database is uh, supposed to have all values same. So that is our requirement and you know from the set theory definition or that is something re uh, default right. Otherwise the, these two duplicate rows it will be confused for the um, by the user. So when we are asking some details about a particular student suppose all the details of two students are looking same how you will differentiate those students right so, uh, something like that so that is where this primary key is having a key role and we already seen the what is uh, super key what is key what is candidate key primary key and other keys right so this is something we discuss so far now the requirement is like uh, when you define a primary key you know out of the candidate keys one of them uh, will be designated as the primary key and the remaining will be just uni unique but this is something applicable only to the primary key that it should not contain any uh, null. We are not uh, going to allow null value to any primary key attribute that's all. So that is what the entity integrity concerns. So as far as an entity a single entity is concerned okay so this is something that is relating a single entity uh, one of the major entity integrity constraint is uh, something like uh, the primary key value should not be null why it is so mm, uh, you know the not null constraint as well as pri uniqueness constraint everything now the requirement is uh, we are relating these two like uh, by saying that primary key attribute should not be null in the sense if you are repeating this primary key uh, I mean primary key is something that is not supposed to be repeat right so it is uh, what is making the database tuples unique from uh, one to another. Suppose you allow this null value what will happen this primary key itself um, is not sufficient to differentiate different tuples right. So two tuples may have all other fields same and you are simply depending on this primary key value and if that is null in worst case say two of them are having null value then how you will differentiate these two tuples right. So the primary key that role is not satisfied. So that about it. So this is because the primary key value is used to identify the individual tuples in a relation we know. And having null value for the primary key implies that we cannot identify some of the tuples because uh, now it makes the things uh, duplicate right. So we don't want it. So for example if two or more uh, tuples uh, had a null value for the primary key we may not be able to distinguish between them. So because primary key the ultimate purpose is by which we should be able to uniquely identify each tuple. Now that is uh, not going to satisfy right because of this null value. So we, you should not allow null value for primary key that's all. So that about it. Now mm, referential integrity constraints. So this you how to give more attention so compared to all other integrity constraints we discussed so far. This is something that is interesting and it's uh, 
uh, more important okay let me say so so key constraints and integrity constraints uh, something we discussed so far they are all constraints uh, specified on individual relation so for a particular entity mm, when it is mapped to a relation it is having key constraint uh, and other constraint we discussed so far now we are going to define a constraint that is something spread across multiple tables right so the referential integrity constraint is specified between two tables and is used to maintain the consistency between the tuples in two relations so informally the referential integrity constraint so here i see i mean integrity constraint okay so states that a tuple in a own relation that refers to another relation must refer to an existing tuple in that relation so this is uh, very important let me try to explain with the uh, an example so that the same example let me take i have an employee table okay employee relation which is having the attribute dno uh, so this stores the department number where this employee is working right so this dno gives the department number for which each employee works so hence its value in the in every employee tuple must match the department number so in department table so department is another uh, relation where i have the field d, d, d number okay now in the employee table i am maintaining uh, this dno so these two should match something like that so whenever the uh, you want to know more details about the department where this particular employee is working you will take the department number and you will be referring the department relation and that time there should be some entry corresponding to this department number and by linking these two you can <coughs> link between these two tables okay you can refer from one table to another with the help of this uh, particular field <coughs> so this is something called as foring we are going to see its formal definition to define differential integrity um, integrity more formally we have to know the concept of foring <coughs> i think before moving on to the formal definition from textbook and all let me give you a small example so that uh, idea will be very clear at this point so what i'm going to take is uh, the student uh, or um, okay employee and department that example let's take so this is my <coughs> employee table here i am going to store all details of the employee okay so let me take uh, informations like uh, the employee name employee say age salary and all other details i am storing and in addition to that i am keeping this department number information also so what i mean by this is uh, so let me look at this department num i mean department table also <coughs> and here i have a field that is d number department number so here i am writing it as d n no here it is d num okay okay let me make it more clear so here there are many as uh, fields so i am focusing on a particular field called uh, dno okay dno here so that is department number only but i am giving this a different name if you want you can give the same name also no issue and other details of the department like a uh, department uh, mm, name location manager etc right department location like that you can uh, have other information assume that the uh, department is in a single location otherwise this is to be handled differently we will see that now let's see the attributes like uh, so this is a particular em employee say having this name and uh, say let his age be some something like this and department number he with where he is working is five now if i am making this kind of an entry before that i have i should have a guarantee that such a department exists simply i am referring to a department with the department number five but it is not available in um, in this department table which is meaningless right so let the name of the department location etc okay something like this so this is important now you can see that this field is actually trying to refer this field see how i am denoting it so i have an arrow from dno to d number so the here i am uh, putting uh, an arrowhead arrowhead here okay so now you can see that in this department table this department number is a unique uh, attribute right in the sense uh, mostly it will be the primary key okay so uh, anyway it has to be unique uh, that is a requirement because otherwise it is meaningless right so if it is referring uh, if it is repeating like this when i am referring uh, with this five where, where i will refer uh, this row or this row i will be confused so i don't want it so there it should be uh, a primary key then only this reference is meaningful okay 
so when you are referring this is something you have to maintain so this uh, this is a uh, very important because uh, when you are referring from employee table to department table the attribute where you are referring that is a department number here it should be a primary key here otherwise this reference is meaningless so when i want to know the details of the department number uh, with the department with the department number 5 i am um, facing two more tuples with the department number 5 then i'll be confused whether i will get data from here or here this is something i don't want i want this to be uh, primary key okay so and you know in department table this department number is a primary key field also so here i have another primary uh, i mean department number and its uh, details etc okay like this okay now another thing is uh, suppose this is the current state of uh, this particular table and uh, let me write uh, one more uh, entry say with the department number 7 i am just randomly uh, writing uh, something okay mm. so this is the uh, what i can write uh, it is something called uh, the state of the uh, relation uh, department okay uh, current state of the uh, particular relation now uh, if i am uh, inserting a new value into this employee table so this is the current state now the state is changing like i am inserting another value say something like this now see i am putting here a, a value mm, say 8 now um, did you face any difficulty like so uh, is it a valid insertion because when i am inserting this 8 you, you you just see it's such an entry is not there right so before inserting you have to ensure that such an entry already exists in the department table otherwise it is a violation of the what integrity constraint what kind of integrity constraint referential integrity constraint so i am referring so whenever you are inserting something like this you know that with respect to this dno you will be referring that other table for later join uh, purpose and all if or uh, some cross reference like if you want to know details of the department where the employee with name bb something randomly the where that particular employee is working you want to know the name of that department or some other details you can't refer it anymore because such an entry is not there so at any time when you are doing this kind of so this is a uh, violation of the so uh, this is something that should not happen so i can say that this is a violation of referential referential integrity constraint so whenever you are inserting some value into uh, this particular table so here i have a reference from employee table to department table right so at this point i can say that this employee table is a referencing relation referencing relation referencing relation because it is referring the other one right so this is a referred one okay referred uh, relation now the thing is that uh, you can have any number of reference like this so here uh, employee table is the referencing relation department is a refer relation sometimes you know in the same table itself let me tell you another field to say um, what i am going to add now is say i am going to add the uh, manager uh, details right uh, so who is the manager let me write like this and other fields are also there so what i am going to keep here is uh, something like a uh, so here i uh, so th now this is not a complete table because uh, see here there is no primary key right so there should be some primary key here because employee name everything can repeat so uh, let me uh, uh, write it like uh, say that social security number hope you remember so let it let me add it here now i am making it as a primary key also right so primary key uh, we will denote like this okay so this is a primary key okay now and uh, so this is employee number 101 102 like that so now what what is so i am making this uh, employee number 102 as manager of this department now you can see here there is another reference that is happening uh, say from this uh, manager uh, this particular field to this particular field right so, so some kind of a reference is here so now this uh, department table is acting as a referencing relation and the employee table is acting as a referred relation so this is something that is defined with respect to so here i given this name referencing and referred with respect to this particular reference but uh, when this uh, reference changes accordingly this referencing and referred relation will vary hope it is clear i, I don't know this figure may be confusing but anyway you uh, i hope you got the concept right so depending on that so here i have a two references so one is from department number to uh, this uh, dno to dn number another is from this manager field to e employee assn so here mm, okay so what i can uh, tell you is so so this is on on reference okay this is my first reference and this is my second reference so in uh, reference number 1 uh, employee table is acting as the referencing relation 
referencing relation because from employee table I am looking at department table and the department table is working as the referred relation okay referred relation and accordingly the referencing attribute and uh, referred attribute but if I am looking at re the second reference that blue color uh, here uh, employee table act as the referred referred relation because I am referring towards employee uh, and the department table act as the okay referencing one okay like this so hope you get it so whenever I am referring uh, that I should refer to a what called a primary key now another another important concept uh, here is uh, what is so now what is this DNO so what is this field now I can call this particular DNO as a new name with a so now I am introducing a new key called the foreign key okay foreign key so here because it is uh, uh, a foreigner or something like that it is uh, referring that dnum right so uh, with respect to this table um, this is not having any meaning so what this mean everything is uh, defined in a different table right so it is a foreigner for this particular employee table something like that so we, we can call it as a foreign key okay so you can see that with respect to this particular uh, reference I mean this reference number one who is a foreign key for the DNO act as a foreign key so DNO field of the employee table okay because employee table is the uh, referencing table so always foreign key will be from the referencing table refer to table the same foreign key will be referring to a primary key there okay similarly in this reference number two if you are seeing you can see that this uh, manager this field is acting as a foreign key okay so because it is referring that employee SSN field so here Mm, the foreign key is uh, this uh, not that employee SSN this is manager this particular field of the department table because it is a referencing relation okay so foreign key is something that is referring uh, so we will see the formal definition okay anyway you got it right so here this uh, uh, what is a foreign key so whenever you have a reference from a referencing relation referred relation and the attribute using which you are referring is what we call as a foreign key in the referencing table and in the referred table that particular reference should be towards a primary key attribute okay otherwise that reference is meaningless okay and like that so whenever you insert a value delete a value so see here you can observe one thing inserting into the reference relation may create problems you have to be careful so it is always a valid reference okay it, should, it leads to a valid reference similarly if you suddenly uh, let me tell you so if you suddenly remove this field that is also crucial because five with four five there is a reference so whenever you are deleting something like this you have to ensure that uh, what you have to do with this fields right so either you can make it something like null or default value or this this also you can cascade and you can delete so like that options are there anyway that much detail we will see soon so anyway right now I want you to understand what is a foreign key okay and what is this referential integrity constraint so if this reference is invalid like when I'm looking at a manager say with the ma uh, ID 102 and when I'm looking at the employee table there is no one with the ID 102 at that point I can see that uh, the referential integrity constraint is violated I don't want it okay fine so that about it so uh, now you read it in the referential integrity uh, constraint states that a tuple so what this referential integrity constraint states that a tuple in one relation that refers to so so here you uh, already you saw many, many references that refers to another relation must refer to an existing tuple in that relation fine so to define that we are going to define foreign key now you understand what is foreign key let's see the formal definition the conditions for a foreign key given below specify a referential integrity constraint between two relations so foreign key is something that we introduced to, to keep this referential integrity constraint or to ensure uh, uh, this referential integrity constraint this foreign key is being introduced a set of attribute fk so it can be a single attribute or more than one attribute just like we saw in primary key or key um, sometimes two more than one attribute together is acting as a key similarly here also it uh, what example we saw is single attribute but again it can be more than one attribute also but if it is more than one attribute together will be referring uh, accordingly primary key is also more than one attribute something like that in one relation schema r1 is a foreign key of r1 so r1 is the referencing relation according to me and it references a relation r2 so here this uh, foreign key is something uh, for the so it's formally de defined here finally this r1 is what we call as a referencing relation so now you know that what is referencing relation so uh, the, uh, the referencing re relation that particular referring attribute is what we call as a foreign key right now this r2 is something uh, known to be because um, the referred relation because I am having a reference from r1 to r2 r1 is a referencing relation r2 is a referred relation right 
right now a set of attribute from uh, from r1 the referencing relation is said to be foreign key so these are all the conditions the attributes in prior the foreign key that set uh, should have the same domain as a primary key attribute of the uh, i mean pk primary key attributes pk of r2 okay so, so just like this here d and now what is the domain some integers uh, suppose we are assuming like the department number is uh, having identified by an integer so, sometimes if you want you can make it a color group of string i mean character and integer together also say d1 d2 like that you can give any name naming convention so accordingly anyway you have a domain right so what is the domain you have for and dno field it should be same as a domain of dnum okay so domain means what set of all possible so here uh, you know you can uh, think of a domain so what is the domain of dno here it is 5 this 8 is invalid so so for a valid case the, this is something subset of this like that okay similarly what is uh, the domain of this d num field you can see that it is something uh, like 5 6 7 and uh, you can see it is a valid reference uh, this without this row uh, so when i am inserting 8 if it 8 is not here it is invalid but anyway suppose this is only i am having then this is a valid reference because i am getting it as a subset but if you are adding 8 also now it is an invalid reference okay so the requirement is like uh, the foreign key the domain of uh, this uh, foreign key sh should be same as uh, uh, not same it can be a subset something like that okay so it should not contain any value other than uh, the do from the domain of dnum so that is uh, what we mean so the attributes of fk uh, has the same domain or simply if both are of same domain then there is no issue but even though if it is a subset of that then also i am it's fine for me but if it is something different uh, it's uh, the it will violate referential integrity constraint as the primary key uh, address so simply what we try to make sure is we will make this uh, domain same for both then it is fine right then there is no issue at all okay uh, the attributes uh, fk that is uh, the foreign key are set to reference or refer to the relation r2 okay now uh, second criteria so this is the first condition the domain should be same okay so this is the first condition now the second criteria i mean second requirement is Uh, the value fk in uh, in, uh, in, a, in a particular tuple t1 of the current state so look at the current state of this uh, first relation reference in relation here you can see this is the current state right i mean uh, this value uh, alone uh, here this is the current state okay so small r of capital r something like that uh, so look at the current state of the uh, relation r1 and take any tuple okay so for that tuple uh, just like uh, the look at the foreign key value so here it is 5 okay so look at the or in the case of manager uh, that 102 so look at that foreign key value mm. so it, sh it should either one, one thing is it, it in that particular foreign key value should uh, occur as a primary key for some tuple in the current state of uh, r2 of r2 you got it right so this is the refer referred relation so here the state is containing this uh, three tuples right so this five should appear as a primary key value for some tuples of uh, this particular um, current state of the referred relation so here it is matching okay otherwise uh, so that is how you are so th that is how you are defining the foreign key so th this should be true okay so accordingly you have to populate the values of this foreign key okay uh, so that is one thing either you can um, make sure that both are same or you can make sure that uh, so if the suppose uh, here there is no match right so instead what you can do is if you are making it as null then it is fine so when you are trying to make it as 8 it's creating problems so instead of 8 uh, either you make some value like 5 6 7 or uh, you can make it as null that also fine okay so that means you are not referring something like that so that is what is explained here uh, so it, it is either null or it is a uh, valid uh, tuple you are referring there so in the uh, uh, former case if it is a valid reference you can see that for the tuple t1 some random tuple from the referencing relation r1 uh, its foreign key value and the uh, primary key value of some tuple t2 uh, from r2 okay this should match then only i can say that uh, there is a valid reference and we say that the tuple t1 references or refers to the uh, tuple t2 okay fine so i have a reference from uh, relation r1 to r2 or tuple t1 to t2 something like that in this in this definition this r1 is called the referencing and the r2 is called the referred relation and uh, if these two condition i mean this condition this condition hold i can say that the referential integrity constraint hold from a relation r1 to r2 
so in a database many relations um, i mean the, uh, of many in database of many relation there are many referential integrity constraint we already seen here itself uh, you can see a referential integrity constraint that is from uh, with respect to that uh, re reference one and with respect to reference two like that you can have n number of uh, referential integrity constraint uh, okay examples are like this so so this is typically arises from the uh, real world meaning right i mean uh, the relationship that exists uh, so you you need a very clear understanding of the uh, meaning or role of each attribute uh, as well as relation everything and then only you can see how these references are happening for example uh, the same thing they are also taking employee table that's dno refers to the department for which the employee works uh, okay so in the department table it may be referring to uh, okay uh, so we can use either d number some different field or the same d n also you can use anyway that reference is there so it can so whenever you are trying to refer uh, that um, foreign key value in the reference in relation it should be either null i mean there is no reference uh, null means that or it should be a valid reference in the sense when the, uh, that particular value should be there uh, in some of the primary key value of the referred relation okay so hope it is clear now you know sometimes the reference may be from a relation to itself okay so what i can tell you is we already seen that uh, we have this uh, employee table okay so we have this employee table where we have uh, employee number some sorry or uh, some ssn something we written right uh, employee number instead of that uh, some social security number employee name okay employee name and let me keep a field like a uh, supervisor okay who is supervising this employee super uh, supervisor okay so this is another field and another field is this dno that is having that reference like that many things are now i am going to define a re reference uh, so now the reference is something like uh, from the table to itself so so far we saw references from one table to another okay now you can think of some references uh, recursively like one table is referring to itself so here what i mean by that is every employee is having a supervisor right so what i'm going to do is i will be storing the uh, this is employee number 101 is having now uh, some name and the supervisor uh supervisor field i'll be keeping the employee number because supervisor is also an employee right so let me uh, keep it like a 200 and uh, some other uh, in department number five so like that okay now uh, you know at some point this entry should be defined right so he is having some uh, name okay so like that he may or may not have a, a supervisor so here this uh, who is supervisor of employee number 101 so just look at the supervisor id it is 200 so you can say that this xx is the supervisor of employee say a b like that now if i am putting it as null what does it mean this particular x is, he may be the topmost fellow so he don't have any f supervisor further i mean uh, so that is the point where uh, i can give a value uh, like a null okay so you can either make so here you can see the referencing and referred both are same so here which is a, this is a primary key right and this is a foreign key because uh, from that referencing point this foreign key uh, that terminology we are using the foreign using that foreign key we are referring a different table or the same table itself okay anyway you got it right now if, if the foreign key value is saying that it is null means there is uh, no valid reference in the sense he is not having a supervisor otherwise uh, you you can find some value but if i'm randomly saying that the supervisor uh, field i am putting a value to not to five and such a, an entry is not there that is meaningless that should not be the case okay so sometimes the foreign key can can refer to uh, its own uh, relation right for example the super uh, super ssn supervisor ssn something like that of the employee table refers to the supervisor of an employee and this is another employee represented by the same Mm, i mean same employee relation so super assistant is a foreign key that reference to employee relation itself say through to this essn okay something like that so notation we can diagrammatically display the referential integrity constraint by a directed arc something like this so this is what we are uh, explained here directed arc and the arrow head may be point to the primary key okay so here this arrow head is pointing to essn that is a primary key so here you can see we already defined the different relations their primary key etc in the last video lecture now we are continuing from that point and we are formally defining the different uh, referential integrity constraints or the uh, we are defining the foreign key and where they are referring like that so some of them let me explain so this is something i explained you already this super ssn 
this this one okay ssn so uh, who is a supervisor of a given employee so that is uh, this particular one now you can see anything uh, similarly in the department table if you want to know who is the manager of a given department uh, that manager ssn and that will be referring here so this is a reference in relation this is a referent relation similarly department uh, locations department number is there uh, if you want to know more details about the, about the department like who is the manager manager started etc you using this link you go here and uh, refer here here okay so here uh, this d number act as a foring key and also it is a part of the primary key of the department location so like that same attribute itself may have more than one role similarly um, if you want to know the details of the project project number to project similarly de dependent uh, so if you want to know who is the details of the employee uh, of a particular dependent you can uh, use this uh, essn and you can go to that employee table okay so just follow that arrow you will understand so like that um, the employee and uh, so these two things i explained you like uh, i mean this one and this one okay like that you can think of any number of uh, references okay in again so once you define all references correctly and precisely so that is all you are almost done uh, with the relational database modeling and uh, there are more things we will see one by one so that about it let me quickly tell you some other constraints this is something i we already saw uh, like uh, we are focusing mainly on the integrity constraints right like uh, so not only that uh, the um oh, what called the scheme schema based constraint so whenever you are defining the schema see this including the differential integrity constraint primary con constraint everything we have to define along with the schema definition so you can define so this is a foring key and where it references all those things you can define okay we will see how these definitions can be given formally when we discuss that sql okay structured query language and that time we will see these things but uh, for the time being so we can define them along with the schema so they are all coming under the schema based constraint now there is another category of constraint i already told you like a semantic integrity constraint a quick review of it so something like uh, the employees um, of uh, the, sorry some examples are like uh, say the salary of an employee should not exceed the salary of the uh, his supervisor right so you know so otherwise it is meaningless a supervisor is supposed to get some more salary right so look at any employee his salary should not uh, be more than uh, the supervisor's salary so you how can you ensure this so that is a question so is it something you can do with the schema you can't do right so because it is something when you are inserting some values you have to do this cross checking so whenever you are inserting some value so it is not even a reference okay so it is not even coming under the referential integrity category but just a condition or some additional constraint it is so what do you have to do whenever you are inserting a new value just look at the salary information that uh, of that employee now look at the supervisor id okay and see uh, now using foring key uh, or uh, referential integrity you refer that uh, supervisor details and look at his salary and see that uh, the salary value which you are going to insert is a value less than the salary information of the uh supervisor sa salary value of the uh, supervisor so this is some kind of checking that you can do additionally so before you are inserting any information into the database you you can do this checking right so whenever you are going to in uh, so right now you are going to insert details of a new employee and you are going to insert who is his supervisor everything you are inserting right assume that he is having a supervisor so we are not uh, ta talking about the topmost person so that he, he may not even have a supervisor or you don't have to worry about his salary okay but in between suppose a person is there he is having a supervisor so you are inserting all the details what is his salary what is his supervisor everything but before making this insertion happen some program you have to i mean some extra so software code you have to write and that will do this checking so it will look at the values you are going to insert and it will take that salary information separately and then it will look at the manager id right so that uh, manager assessor and it will refer the same table and it will identify the manager value which is already there otherwise referential integrity constraint it's a violated okay so suppose it is already there referential integrity constraint is fine and then you will see the salary and you will check whether the his supervisor salary is greater than his salary if it is not the case you will not allow that particular data to be entered into the database because it is against the constraint right so that is one thing you can think of so this is to be enforced within the application program so it is not something that is coming out part of the schema so it is not a schema based constraint so you have to write software code for that right 
so it is to be ensure, um, enforced within the application program that update the database by using some general purpose constraint specification language if you want you can use triggers and assertion we may uh, feel them uh, when we uh, implement uh, got this these concepts in using sql and they are actually trying to implement the same okay don't worry about them we will we may see later but anyway you got the concept right so what is uh, this um, semantic constraint some examples now you can give right now similarly one more small uh, yeah the, uh, with this i will wind up state constraint and transition constraint mm, so you know state transition is something happening frequently from in a database right always the database will be in a one set of uh, valid state right on on valid state and at any point after doing some insertion deletion or modification it is moving on to a different valid state so we want it to be valid okay now all the constraints which are hold um, which are holding within a given state is what we can call as a state transition but there are certain constriction constraints that is applicable across state transition so when you are changing from one state to another this particular constraint is to be guaranteed okay that you have to ensure so let's see the example so the type of constraints that we discussed so far are typically state constraint because they define the constraint uh, for a valid state that's all so we saw many things they are all state constraints so another type of constraint that one can think of is a transition constraint uh, so that can be defined to deal with the state changes so transition means state change right so when you are doing a transition or a state change what are the constraints you want for example Mm, or for this transition constraint is the salary of an employee is only increasing right so at any point employee is getting some salary and it's suddenly decreasing it is meaningless so we always want the salary to be increasing right so that is one constraint i am having so whenever you are inserting a new employee details you uh, or you are uh, not about inserting it is something it is al already there you are updating the salary information say and uh, already it was some five th fifty thousand and next you are updating it to sixty thousand now it will see whether the new updated value is greater than the older value then you will allow but in uh, worst case suppose you are uh, updating that 50,000 to 40,000 it will throw it as an error because the new salary of the employee is lesser than his previous salary that we don't want because the company policy says so okay so accordingly uh, so this is something that related to state change right so whenever you are modifying that salary details it will change from one state to another or there is a state transition and that time you have to do this checking after making this clear you ha you can proceed or without uh, making this checking um, say using some software code if you are directly proceeding uh, that may that will create error okay so we don't want it so that about it uh, thanks for watching so th in this video we covered a very important concept that is that uh, referential integrity and the concept of foreign key hope it is clear if you have any doubt anyway you will have doubts uh, you can uh, ask me okay during our uh, dive discussion sessions yeah thank you thanks for watching